I was connecting the dots to trying to keep children's interest by saying, you know, we really talk about parent voice and we talk about parent engagement. We talk about being focused on the needs of families. We don't really do that very well. Here's an opportunity to do that. Mm -hmm. You know, I think you and I just made a really good leadership pair because we both had, you know, this hair. And mm -hmm. so <laughs> we had enough, we had enough experience to, mm -hmm. to separate out the, no, we're not going to do that. We're not going that path. That's not effective. This is where we need to be. And so yeah. I think that allowed us to leap from the, oh, we're going to do yet another needs assessment and we're going to, you know, we're going to do the basic convening and we're all going to spend a year trying to figure out what we're going to do. And I think both you and I were like, no, uh, -uh we know enough. We want to jump in and get to mm -hmm. the do. But it, it, it felt like that the, the NICU supports that were built through coin was something new it wasn't something that had been tried before it wasn't something that was um the extended and the community and the family navigator piece for families well and i think the and, other piece i forgot the reason that was is because we also didn't have a complex care clinic anymore mm. so and most of the other coins again, were the Title V, the complex care clinic. A lot yeah. of them were yeah. you're that extension of complex care, right? Yeah. We need to get more family voice. We need to have a family advocacy committee around our complex care clinic. Minnesota, Texas, those were all based out of their complex care clinics. Yeah, yeah. So that was, yeah, we didn't have it. So I think it just, so part of it was serendipitous because mm -hmm. we had to create something that wasn't relying on a complex care clinic, wasn't relying on Title V. So that I think gave us freedom to your point, yeah. Jill, yeah. to do something different and creative rather than plug it into something existing. Yeah. I think that was the other unique mm -hmm. thing that kept the focus on the parenting partnership. Um, about the barriers that you had and and not just in the coin work um, when it came specifically to um, working with family voice or family leaders embedded in the project, but also the barriers that you could see um, doing that model in a clinical setting. So I think that that's a barrier. The other barrier is simply for the healthcare system to find ways to formally partner with parents. It, they see parents as parents, not parents as working partners. And so that's everything from access into systems, but also just um, changing your model. Um, it's like children's had a parent advisory council, right? But they didn't the Parent Advisory Council was seen as a place to go when there was a parent problem, right? Or we had an issue uh, or we had a, um, a media event and such. And I'm not diminishing that, it was important, but it wasn't seen as, oh, let's get these folks integrated into to our paths so we can really get some inside knowledge into what's working and what's not working the whole contracting process, the whole ability to formalize and pay parents to, to have legitimate working roles mm -hmm. um, is, um, is a huge barrier mm -hmm. and we make it almost impossible, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, especially within research, especially within research. Well, where, and most healthcare oh. systems are gonna push this into research because yeah. The other side of the world is all based on bill claims billing, right? So, so that's, that's why they push it into the research side. And then you're right, whether it's research or whatever, it just, we don't make the contracting process um, reflective of the um, infrastructure that's mm -hmm. available mm -hmm. that parents work within. Mm -hmm. So on the opposite end of that, so what do you see, what did you see were the advantages either personally or to the project? Um, in the parent, in the partnering? In the, in the partnering piece. Oh, gosh, that's easy. <laughs> so um, it, it is, um, so 
house healthcare systems, and I won't even go with me personally. I mean, I personally, I have a passion around you have to partner with those that you are trying to um, address and help and need, address a need, right? You can't, you just, you have to build it from scratch with those for whom you are trying to um, make a better outcome for. And so if you don't do that, then forget it. You're just top down and it's totally ineffective. But beyond my personal passion on that, healthcare systems don't know parents. It's, it's especially pediatric ones. Let's be real. You know, we only want to talk about the kid, heaven forbid, the parent. How would we legitimize talking to this mom that just got dis discharged from the NICU? I could certainly own all the stuff that children screwed up in the discharge, but I can't possibly begin to put myself in her, his or her shoes. The other benefit was, um, oh, I think it helps us so much in our language, in our ability to um, translate, and I don't mean literal language translation, but <clears throat> to take concepts that we in the healthcare system throw out all the time and, um, and have them be reflected back from, from you guys, you know, from our parent experts who were talking with parents. A reciprocal piece of that too, taking the healthcare system language mm -hmm. and then reflecting it back in parent language and family speak to right. the family. So, you know, be having that, that liaison that can do those pieces. And, and, and also too, one of the takeaways for me was the, the, the real light bulb of parents talk differently to systems mm -hmm. and to, um, you know, lots of letters after someone's name than they do to someone that says, I'm a parent too, right. whether they're a professional or not. Um, and so there's just a different vibe. There's just a different feel and they open up in a different way. And being able to take that information and give that to you and Gabby and Nate as, as he came along and say, hey, you know, this is what's really <clears throat> going on with this parent. And then looking at their notes and their charting and going, oh, well, that makes sense because they miss these appointments and, mm -hmm. and how do we support them? Okay, let's come together as a team and provide, you know, some knowledge and, and not wrap around support. So mm -hmm. that was my takeaway, but for that and, 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 and working with the work I'm doing now, I'm hoping to build some of that back into some of those systems that I'm working with, but it's a hard sell. <laughs> it is, it is, it is sadly a hard sell, much harder than it should be. It and, should be. and I, and I think it isn't, I think the other thing Shonda is that you and Cindy were able to give the parents, the space, the time, the, 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 the framework to, um, to really talk about their whole selves. I think people don't quite understand the emotional place you have to be in to be able to sometimes advocate for a system that, you know, is totally, you know, um, missing the boat on your own kid um, or to support a parent who, you know, is probably is perhaps being a little unreasonable in what they expect that system to be able to do on behalf of their child. Yeah, no, so. there's a lot of social like maturation that comes along yes. with the role that you, if you don't have certain tools in your tool bag, um, to support families where they're at um, through your own lived experience and mm -hmm. learning and growing and having hard conversations in the most tactful of way, um, then, then yeah, that, that's important in this role. Otherwise, mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of uh, emotion that can bubble up for the, the parent peer support too. There's a lot of um, things that someone might not necessarily be able to to navigate and support in a parent when they come to or triggering as well in a, in a parent with a younger kiddo because it's so fresh it's so new mm -hmm. and you know 
we've, well, we've gotten a little yeah. calloused by the whole <laughs> <laughs> well and you have to be right we all do you know it's it's but i think it's also and it's also uh where was my thought going on this that um it's also about getting to an outcome yeah. i think there's also a misconception the parent peer support is only about emotional support yeah. that it isn't necessarily helping that parent get to a new step in their journey as a parent.